Okay, so here's one that we haven't solved yet. And notice the difference is, number one, we have functions on both sides. Plus, they're different functions in the sense. I, I know they're both sine functions, but the input is different. So that kind of changes things. All right, so what we want to do is solve. Um, so again, you might be like, well, maybe we should bring this over and set it equals zero. That would probably be a good idea. But we also need to deal with this guy. So bells and whistles should be going off into your brain and you should think oh that's a double angle so maybe i need to use a trig identity because when you solve equations you always want um to deal with things now the previous problems when we've had like an example like sine of 2x equals a half or something like that those we didn't have to mess with the trig identity and the reason is because we had a single function so once we did the inverse function, we were okay dealing with, you know, 2x or 2 alpha equaling whatever, and then we divided by 2. That was not a problem. Um, but here we have two functions, and so we can't just do inverse sine. That just doesn't work um, because they're really two different functions because they have different inputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my double angle and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as a trig using a trig identity I should say and then it's nice because now I you know like this is the same as that although it's getting multiplied by this function but they're all in terms of x so now I'm going to bring this guy over so I'm going to subtract sine of x to both sides Um, I'm kind of treating this like a quadratic a little bit. Um, you know how like when you solve equations like this, you know, you bring the 3 over and then you, you know, divide and so forth. But when you have a quadratic, you don't solve those equations that way. If you have a quadratic, then your goal is to set it all equal to 0, so you bring things over to one side. So I'm kind of treating that the same way, and the reason is because I have multiple functions. And so I can't treat it like just an easy kind of one step kind of deal. All right, looks like I might be stuck with a thick line here. All right, so now at this point, um, I can't uh, do anything with these. These are not like terms. So the only thing I can do is I look how they both have that same function. And so I can factor that out, which is good because I want to get a single sign as a factor, or at least, you know, maybe there's a coefficient or something. And then I want to get the cosine by itself. So if I factor out the sine, I get that and that, okay. Um, the equivalent in algebra would be, you know, if you had something like 2x squared, um, let's see, minus x equals zero and you factored out the x, you got two minus, uh, let's see, two x minus one or something like that. Or if you had two x y minus x equals zero would probably be more accurate and you take out the x and you get 2y minus 1 equals 0. But it's along those lines. You have two different things going on and you're trying to get them apart from each other so that you can actually solve. All right, so the good news is, is I actually was able to do that. All right, so again, just kind of like a quadratic, you're going to set this guy equal to 0 and you're going to set that guy equal to 0. Um, let's finish this one. 2 cosine x, bring add 1 to both sides. Divide by 2. Okay, so in both cases, I have the function isolated equal to the, a number, function isolated equal to a number. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do the inverse sign to this guy. So x is equal to, and again, remember, this is me choosing to do this. So I am not limited by any type of domain rules for inverse functions. And then same thing over here, except it's the inverse cosine to both sides. Again, these undo each other, and I get x equals inverse cosine of a half. All right. So again, normally we expect 2 from each of these. Um, if I look over here, 1 is sine 0. So let's see. This is 1, 0. This is what? Negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0. All right, and so here sine is zero in two different places. And notice I would you'd normally have two formulas, but if you look at those, they are straight across from each other, and the angle up here and the angle down here are identical. So that means I can kind of get by with one formula. So I would say, you know, x such that 
x is equal to 0 plus, and then instead of 2k pi, it would just be every pi, because pi would hit here, pi here, pi here. So I would just need k pi. And again, you know, x is an integer or whatever. And again, the 0 is kind of useless. Um, so k is an element of the integers. Okay, so that's one of my formulas. And that knocks out the 2 that we get from this guy. So now I need to look over here. So when is cosine a half? So again, we've had a lot of those. So here's my half. And, you know, that's square root of 3 over 2. And then again, if I reflect over the x, I get the same half, positive half. I just get a negative square root of 3 over 2 down here. But this time I'm focusing on cosine. So this guy is, what, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. So that's pi over 3. And this would be 2k pi because I have to go all the way around to get back to it. And then this guy, I can't do negatives here. Um, so this is what? Pi over 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pi over 6, which reduces to what? That's what? 5 pi over 3? So x such that x is 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi where k is an element of the integers. Okay, and again, the reason I had to have two formulas over here is this angle is that big, this angle is this big. I can't, there's no pattern there, so therefore I need to have them, All right? So again, on Alex, I'm not sure how they want to list it. They might have one big bracket with like the words or in between or something like that. Now again, if they give you an interval where they're like, okay, well, you know, we want all the answers, say, between maybe 0 and 2 pi. Then what you have to do is take all your formulas and start subbing in. Like, okay, well, if k equals 0, what do I get? Well, obviously you get 0 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. All right, and then you sub in k equals 1, and you're like, okay, well, this one, if I sub in k over 1, I get pi. Um, if I sub it into here, I'm adding 2 pi on top of that. That's going to be outside. And if I take pi or k equal 1 and I add 2 pi to that guy, it's going to be outside. So k equals 1 has two things that are too large, but this pi is still within the domain. So I could add it. And if you want to be nice and put them in order, you could go 0 pi over 3, then the pi, then the 5 pi over 3. And you could have gotten those over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, between um, 0 and 2 pi. So that's how you do one that looks more like a quadratic. And we'll do one more here in a second.